Good evening. Welcome to the August 8th meeting of your Aiken City Council. At this time, we'll have our invocation and our pledge. Will you please rise? We're going to open with a moment of silence for Miss Jeanette Croft Holly. She happened to be the mother of Philip Mary, a very courageous woman and a great citizen of Aiken. So, if you would, let's have a moment of silence at this time. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. We pray that your hand would guide us tonight as we tend to your business. Please watch over this council in this city. May everything we say and do be pleasing to you. It's in your name we give all the glory. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Could Troop 421 please come up at this time? <clears throat> We're honored to have some Boy Scouts with us today. And they're going to lead us in our pledge, if that's all right. Gentlemen, welcome for being here. We appreciate it. Yes. Good. We have our colors right here. If you would lead us in our pledge, we'll join in with you. Okay. The loot. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate you coming up and being a part of our meeting tonight. I'd like to start by covering the guidelines of our meeting. Meetings are a public forum in which many opinions are expressed and the business of the city must be conducted. As such, discipline, honorable, and professional decorum is paramount. Courteous and respectful communication is expected. During public hearings, all questions and statements from the public shall be directed to the chair. If you wish to speak, raise your hand and I will most certainly recognize you. Please approach the podium and state your name and your address. In order to allow for an opportunity for everyone who wishes to address council, speakers should limit their comments to the subject being discussed. Each speaker will be given five minutes to address an issue and may only address an issue once unless questions from council are posed to the speaker. And we appreciate you following our guidelines. And I'd like to recognize at this time Mayor Pro Tem Ebner for additions and deletions to the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have uh, one addition to presentations. We'll call it item 2A, presentation on marketing of the city of Aiken. Uh, and that's the only item unless does someone else have an item to add to the agenda. Just want to add an item at the very end uh, regarding a comment regarding the, about the Peninsula Association meeting in Charleston. Okay. All right. Those two items, uh, and I so move. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of the changes? <coughs> Unanimous. Thank you. Moving down the agenda to the minutes. The minutes were distributed to council members prior to our meeting. Is there a motion for the acceptance of the minutes? I so move. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any comments? All those in favor of passing as presented? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down to presentations. First presentation, I'm going to recognize Councilwoman Leslie Price. Please read. Mayor. The City of Aiken and City Council has prepared a proclamation, and this proclamation is in honor of Ms. Donna Moore Westby. And Ms. Donna Moore Westby, if you will come down, please, for us to read this and just Face the podium, please, ma'am. <clears throat> this proclamation uh, reads, whereas Donna Moore Westby has always had a desire to serve people, and whereas Ms. Westby has demonstrated this commitment in many ways, including serving the citizens and youth of Aiken by serving on the Aiken County School Board, and whereas Ms. Ms. Westby began a program to shape policy and maintain communications with the community about important issues related to the education, and that is education matters. 
And whereas July 31st, 2016, represented the milestone of Education Matters founded by Ms. Donna Moore Westby, their 100th episode. Now therefore, let it be resolved that Aiken City Council and Mayor Rick N. Osborne recognize Ms. Westby's commitment to the educational and greater community and the success of Education Matters and hereby express our heartfelt congratulations to Ms. Westby and well wishes for many more successful milestones. May education matters to us each and every day because learning is living. And this is signed by our Honorable Mayor Rick Osborne, Dick DeWar, Mayor Pro Tem Reggie Ebner, Steve Hamoki, Philip Mary, Gail Diggs, and Leslie Price. Congratulations to you. We appreciate all that you do, Donna. Very much so. While, while they're coming down, Donna, you may want to mention the 100th episode and what a good guest you had on there. <laughs> it just so happens that there is a gentleman that looks exactly like me, <laughs> husband, as my guest for the 100th episode. And, and Miss Price was also supposed to be on that broadcast, but she had uh, duties in Philadelphia uh, that uh, prevented her from coming. But I, I certainly um, thank <coughs> Mayor Osborne and Council for this recognition. Uh, of course, anyone who's ever done anything uh, with the community, you know that it's more than just you uh, that that is giving. There are sacrifices being made by everybody up here, my family. You know, they're a part of anything that um, I have ever done. And my husband and my mother here and my father there. And we've got board members and volunteers. Um, we just, I love Aiken. I've been in this community since I was 10 years old. And I am proudly about to be 47 in November. <laughs> and have had a business here. Um, I love this community, and as long as God gives me the breath and the energy to continue to give back, that's what I will do, because I believe I was called, we're called to serve others and not sit back and be served. And I will do that until the day I die, and I just thank you for this time. Donna, thank you for all you do for us. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Presentations. Number two is a proclamation for National Community Health Center Week. And I'd like to recognize Councilwoman Diggs if she would read that, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This proclamation is for, um, or here to accept this proclamation, is the CEO of Rural Health Services Incorporated here in Aiken, of which we have three sites. And it reads, whereas for over 50 years, community health centers have provided high quality, affordable health care in our nation's underserved communities, demonstrating that locally governed health care can improve lives while lowering costs, and whereas what began as a small demonstration project in two states has grown into the country's largest primary care network, with health centers now serving as the health care home for over 24 million Americans through more than 9,000 delivery sites across the nation. 
one in every 14 people living in the United States looks to a community health center for their care, and whereas health centers provide high quality, cost effective, and accessible primary and preventive care, including integrated medical, oral, vision, behavior health, and pharmacy services to all individuals, regardless of insurance status or ability to pay, and whereas health centers are locally owned and operated small businesses that service critical economic engines, helping to power local economies by generating billions of dollars in combined economic impact and creating jobs in some of our most economically deprived communities, and whereas the health center model continues to prove an effective means of reducing health care disparities and overcoming barriers to health care access, including geography, income, and insurance status, and in doing so, improves health care outcomes and reduces health care system costs. Health care centers save the health system billions annually by managing chronic conditions and keeping patients out of costlier health care settings like hospital emergency rooms. And whereas National Health Center Week offers the opportunity to recognize America's health centers, their dedicated staff, board members, and all those responsible for their continued success and growth since the first health center opens its, door, its doors more than 50 years ago. During this National Health Center Week, we celebrate the legacy of America's health centers and their vital role in shaping the future of America's health care system. Now, therefore, I, Rick Osmond, Mayor, and the Council of the City of Aiken do hereby proclaim August 7th through 13th, 2016, as National Health Center Week and encourage every resident to visit their local health center and celebrate the important partnership between America's health centers and the communities they serve. Thank you, and I'm gonna ask Ms. Diggs if she would to join me in presenting that to you, Carolyn. I, I got to go to a presentation today at, at the Clyburn Center and it was very impressive. And, and the, the service they provide at the, and the efficiency of which they do it is something that we should all applaud. They, they really, they, they watch after that money and they, they actually save ho hospitals a, a lot of money by taking care of those patients at that price. So we're lucky to have that center here. And I guess before we take pictures, we can tell you that we do have three sites here in Aiken County. The Clyburn Center for Primary Care, a new facility that opened in November 2014, where we have uh, we see people with Medicaid, Medicare, private insurance, and sliding scale fee. We have dental, OBGYN services, pediatric services, adult medicine services, behavior health, and a pharmacy on site. <laughs> if you have oh, and vision to make sure. And x rays coming soon, as well as a mobile unit <laughs> where we can go out to rural areas and provide care for people who don't have transportation. If you haven't figured it out yet, Count, Councilwoman Diggs also uh, works there. Works there. <laughs> My four time job. She does a pretty good job explaining it all. Congratulations, Carol. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. move the next agenda item up. I'm going to ask um, Randy, if he will, to come forward. I appreciate you staying. We we had a presentation in work work session, and uh, it, it, it's a very powerful presentation, I, and we just really wanted our citizens to know exactly what we're looking at doing. Uh, this presentation is on the marketing analysis and branding and marketing that uh, we're considering. And uh, Randy, I, I appreciate you staying. I know you had family, family uh, plans that 
I suspect you're in the doghouse for staying for it, but thank you for being here, and I'll turn the floor over to you at this time. It's all good. I sweet talked to my wife earlier. So, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of council, it's good to be here tonight. Members of the community, thank you for coming out. Um, yeah, it's my pleasure to present two proposals, but I think it's important to understand the framework or, or how these two proposals came to be. And I've been blessed over the years. Um, can you go to full screen? To serve as the Main Street architect for the state of South Carolina. And as a result, I've had the privilege of working with Aiken uh, for almost 20 years now. And so I'm proud of the things that you've accomplished in the past. And I'm especially proud of the things that you've done recently as you look towards an ambitious future. In the past year, you've done two things that, in my humble opinion, are strategic for uh, a quality community. And you conducted a community visioning session with the Boudreaux Group. Um, oh, sorry. And, and you've also done a baseline assessment in, in association with Main Street, South Carolina. And what those two, two um, exercises had in common is they were opportunities for your general public to speak into the future of Aiken and share with you their aspirations. Uh, and this is one thing I can tell you with absolute confidence. You have got a very passionate populace. Uh, you not only have a passionate pop populace, but you have a very informed citizenry because their, their, their input in both of these exercises were both quite good and quite consistent. Um, but here's, here's the rub. Um, it all comes down to vision. And what we heard loud and clear from all of those community citizens were expressing a vision that they all had in their head, and yet we need to visualize that vision. Uh, the great inventor Thomas Edison said this, a, a vision without a plan is a hallucination. And so it's imperative that you take all of that input and combine it in such a way that people can see their intended future. And that's precisely what you began doing when the Boudreaux Group formed for you your strategic plan, which is one of the better strategic plans that I've ever seen for a council as yourself. These two proposals flow directly out of specific aspects of that strategic plan. It is the first two steps in your efforts to stitch all that input into an actual uh, vision and overall plan for the community. I'll just let you do it. How about that? So the first proposal and the first component is the market analysis. And, and the purpose of this, of course, is to understand and sustain your local com community. Uh, the two specific areas that, that mar this market analysis will address are the downtown central business core area as well as the adjacent north side community. It has a number of purposes, obviously would be retail recruitment, um, but also the identification of target retail markets, understanding a better understanding of the demand for housing, and then finally, the preparation of a very thoughtful um, economic development incentives toolkit. The specific area, of course, in, in your case, the, the, the approach that we would take is what we call a zip code survey-based market analysis. While it is possible to do it through just a simple zip code or through a radial study of a 5, 10, 15 minute drive time, the problem we have is this large area bounded in red called Hitchcock Woods. And if you were to do a radial study, you would end up in an area where, to be blunt and hopefully humorous, squirrels don't shop. <laughs> and as a result, we don't want to have that body of land in, as a part of the market study. And by using a zip code analysis approach, we can get actual shoppers from your local market as well as your visitor market to help us lend the most precise information for the outcome. In the next slide, all of that information goes to, to these kinds of mind-numbing charts. We find out precisely where the shoppers <coughs> and visitors in your downtown are from. We can then draw forth from that primary and secondary trade areas and using a number of sources Forces to gather demographic data, disposable income data, spending patterns and things of that nature, we can then create the chart on the right that takes into consideration every single retail category to, to find out with a, with a bit of precision where this local community is gaining sales and where you're leaking sales. And armed with that information, we can give you very thoughtful recommendations about the types of retail recruitment that you should strive for. However, not everyone, including myself in the world, is very numbers oriented. And so we want to take that data and then, then cull it down into some very simple, obvious retail development objectives. In common English, easy to understand visuals, in this case with a primary tr trade area leakage of 6.2 million in this community, their, one of their key objectives was they were underserved in the categories of sporting goods, toys, and an outfitter store. In the next, 
this community was leaking profusely in the arena of restaurants and so we were able to identify both the number of restaurants they could recruit and the amount of square footage they could occupy. In the next slide, we want to build upon previous studies and excellent studies in the downtown uh, Aiken market about housing to identify actual demand and find out the housing types that your populace prefers, whether it's upper floor loft apartments, small scale developments, kind of cottage nest oriented developments, or even mixed use retail residential occupancies like in the Maybaum building. Next, please. The final piece, of course, of the market analysis is to prepare a very thoughtful economic development incentives toolkit so that we can have the tools in place to be development friendly and to offer these both for our existing uh, businesses as well as those that we're trying to recruit into our markets. When it comes to branding and marketing, we obviously want to, to sell Aiken and promote that the best that it has to offer. And there are a number of ways that we want to do that. The first, I think, is when we think about the branding and marketing, this is kind of where we start, but this should not at all be where we land. In its kind of simplest sense, branding and marketing, marketing are the graphic design elements that we use to capture both the essence of the place, to build community pride, as well as to build a compelling message and recruiting tools for people to come to live, work, dine, reside, and invest into the Aiken community, whether it's through logos that talk about our assets, our destinations, uh, specific events, wayfinding sign signage systems, banners, or advertisements, or brochures, to the degree that those can look professional and unified across the city and across your different agencies. It just sends out a, a message of professionalism uh, to the outside customer. Next, please. One of the thing, the enviable positions that you are in, could we reduce that just a little bit, Stuart? One of the enviable positions that you are in here in, in Aiken is the fact that you are not, no pun intended, a one-trick pony. Um, the fact is Aiken has a lot to offer. In some communities we work in, there's just one asset or one physical element to tout. Here in Aiken, you have multiple ones. In the case of Columbus, Mississippi, they too had multiple uh, assets to tout. They were a river town, they were a university town, uh, they were a military town, they were a progressive town, and so they were actually lamenting uh, just wanting to be one of those, and they were struggling as to which of these we need to promote. And in their case, our strong admonition is you need to tout and celebrate all of those, whether you're river town, a university town, you can just keep going, a military town or historic town or a progressive town. And the same thing is absolutely true, and the same approach is absolutely essential in, the, in, in Aiken's case. I would lament the day that, that, that any firm would try to limit you to just one of your assets, be it your equine industry, be it your uh, retirement market, be it your history, be it so many assets you could promote. In my estimation, we need to celebrate all of those tremendous assets that Aiken has to offer in a very thoughtful manner. Next, please. Finally, we need to make sure that we turn all of that collateral into to pieces that are easily accessible both for the internal market, in other words, the people who call this place home, as well as the external market, people who want to uh, make an informed uh, judgment about visiting or touring or investing in, in the Aiken market. In the case of Greenwood, Mississippi, what we did is we crafted a, a kind of a common portal for all of the agencies, whether it was the city, the chamber, the Main Street Department, uh, the Economic Development Foundation, and right now you can be inserting your local uh, iterations of all of those. And through the answering of one question, you were just directed to the answer that would take you to the right agency, whether it was the economic development case, in this case, ADDA, or in the next, the chamber, which of course would remain true of the chamber here in Aiken as well. Again, to the degree that we can make this experience easy and logical and professional, it'll, it'll enhance your opportunities to, to, to lure people to your place. But we also want to just give you plain old practical collateral. Uh, we'd like to develop as a part of the branding and marketing system a, a, a complete wayfinding signage system as well as a signage plan that includes things like kiosks for, for orienting the traveler when they're downtown to find shops, restaurants, uh, uh, lodging opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. And to the degree that we can navigate the, the, the traveler safely and easily through your community, again, it just tells that message of professionalism and consistency in your community. Last but not least, this is perhaps my favorite aspect of our approach. The first aspect is we have the attitude that everybody should get to play. And what we mean by that on the first level is whether you're the University of, of South Carolina at Aiken, whether you're the city, whether you're the chamber, whether you're ADA or, or, or the uh, Development Foundation, 
we want to offer brand refreshes to any and all of those agencies. And thankfully, we've had conversations with a number of them who've welcomed that. As we're looking at the city, let's look at all of these others to ensure a consistency, whether it's through the, the iconography, the, the type, the, the color choices. And what that affords us the opportunity is to have a consistency in our look, but also individual brand appeals to those separate agencies underneath. The second way that we want everyone to play is once this design is done from, from, the outs, from the objective outsiders is to give it over to the locals, to allow your local people to implement this. Um, obviously all the agencies I just alluded to, but also people like your local print shops, your local ad agencies, give all that collateral to them and allow them to run with it. And so we're stimulating your local economy through that means. But the last thing I want to offer is in concert with the lady who spoke earlier, I, I agree with your sentiment, to the day I die I want to serve. And, and what I want to offer to you as well is my personal skill in the arenas of architecture and planning. While I'm here facilitating the teams as, as, as our, my experts do those two arenas of market analysis and branding and marketing, I would like to join and in, in, in respond to the sentiment we heard of wanting to see uh, visuals. And so uh, doing illustrations and photo renderings and models that illustrate the kind of plans and desires that, that people have communicated in, in the city they want to see animating plans like the, the, the former Union Street plan, bringing those to life with some photo renderings, or finally, we've heard sentiment about, if you go back one, please, about our parkways. Oh, that's okay, don't worry about it. You know, your parkways are such wonderful assets, and, and we, we've heard that there are, commu there are community members who would love to, to consider designs for these, and, and what I'm offering is, is to bring my skills and my visualization skills to bear on those efforts um, so that we can give, respond to the general public's desires to see the actual vision that called for. Thank you. Any questions for me? Yeah, I, I just have a couple of, uh, couple of comments. In the public private session, it was, a, it was a public session held before this meeting, we talked about, uh, and I asked for help in, in marketing the city to people who don't live in the city, i.e. the donut holes, um, because we've never done that. And it's critical that we need to do, uh, we need to do that. And I hope you're able, <clears throat> you're able to provide us with some help. And, and secondly, I just, I just have to express a concern about why we're breaking this into two bids. Um, I, I have a sense that we're doing it so we get it done tonight, not have to go to bid and delay it. And I know there's a sense of urgency on it, but um, the council will have to make that decision whether they, uh, whether they accept that or not. There's no question that what you're gonna do for the city is, is in my opinion, worth it. Um, but the bid process stands by itself. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All right. Randy, thank you for Good being job, here. Randy. Thank you. The public? Um, yeah, we can. Randy, are you okay to take, if, if there's any questions from the public? Sure. I guess not. Okay. okay. Donna? Okay. Um, Donna Wesby. Um, I, I, I understand about um, highlighting our assets. But what about also attracting, um, like our young professionals? How would we balance the two with, you know, highlighting like the ones you stated? But we also have a dire need to get some young people in this area as well. Good question, and, and I believe you know a lot of the comments that we heard in the, in the public processes were for assets and destinations that would be family friendly or people, uh, opportunities for young people. And while this is not precisely a planning exercise per se, it is certainly the kind of thing that we could highlight. And especially if we knew of impending <clears throat> projects and plans that would appeal to that market, then I think what we could do is make sure those were featured in advertisements um, so that people can see. Sometimes, matter of fact, it, it's almost fun to, um, shall we say, plant the seed before it's even grown. You know, and sometimes we, we've even branded trail systems, we've branded uh, initiatives, uh, trying to think of a good example, a splash pad, before it even exists, just to, to put, the, put, put the thought in people's minds, that, oh wow, that's on the agenda and it's coming. And, and the other thing that I think we can do, to, was it Donna, was that your yes, name? Sir. Yeah, is, I hate to tell you this, but, but I know you're gonna know this is true and you're gonna say amen. Sometimes you can never underestimate the inability to connect the dots. 
And, and so what I mean by that is, is, is we have so many good ideas that are currently being considered either by the council or by the general public. But I think in a lot of people's minds, they haven't connected the dots between them all. And, and, and that is another role that the, the branding can, can play, is it can highlight every one of those, those initiatives that are either been done or that are in the works, so people can see when they start rolling on, it's like, oh wow, that's a part of the master plan, or that's a part of the vision, or that was my idea. And so those are some of the ways that we do that through the branding and the marketing. I think in the, in the very near term after that, though, I think there needs to be specific uh, planning exercises that, that address those things in a very physical way. Thank you, Randy. Dee Dee? I'm not Dee Dee Vauders, uh, 1022 South Boundary Avenue. I'm not sure whether to ask you or you guys, but how much have we spent so far on Main Street USA? The, um, the, the amount that I I mean, I'd be more than glad to give you a full accounting. Off the top of my head, I know we've spent $12,000 for membership into the program. Okay. But you could give me a full accounting? Absolutely. All right. More than glad to. We're looking at an additional 46500 That's what's going to be proposed this evening? Correct. That's Correct. Right. And that's for more analysis, pretty much. And then do we have a ballpark of what, the, uh, what it will cost to actually launch this after you've analyzed everything? Well, I can just say that in the first instance, they're talking about information. Right. right now, our approach in Aiken is to hope that people find something interesting in downtown Aiken and thereafter suggest that they might want to open up a store. We don't understand what the market uh, demands are. We are not a sci our uh, process is not scientific based. We don't have any of that information. And so the question is, what do we do with the information and how, how costly is that going to be? Well, the first thing that we're going to do when, when uh, we receive the report is to sit down with our existing businesses, because this isn't just about attracting new businesses. We have wonderful businesses downtown that could benefit from the market analysis uh, that uh, would be undertaken. So that's, and that doesn't cost anything to sit down uh, with, with uh, the owners of Trio and say, you know what, we're, we're, we're finding gaps here that you may or may not be aware of. We, we should first and foremost start by fostering and strengthening, uh, strengthening our existing businesses. How much does that cost? That's, that's a matter of handing information to them and then allowing them to collaborate with our consultants to try to better benefit uh, what, what they're doing. So the, co the, the cost of the, the implementation of the, the market analysis is either going to sit on a shelf in a report, like other studies have done, or we're going to do something with it. And, and to answer your question, is it going to be costly to do something with it? I would contend, no, it's not going to cost, because we can, in the first instance, set a series of meetings with this newfound information that we have to support our existing businesses. And then thereafter, when, when, when businesses come knocking on our doors, or, or when we go knocking on their doors, uh, we will have, not a, hey, would you, would you consider Consider coming to Aiken. Let me show you the, what the, our market analysis showed and why you should seriously consider Aiken. Is that going to cost anything? No, that's not going to cost. It's going to cost John McMichael's time. It's going to cost my time. It's going to cost staff time. We have a time we, is money in the business world. That's true. That's true, and that's why I'm mentioning it. Uh, we we have a terrific group of of dedicated volunteers that have stepped forward and serve on our Main Street management team. They're not costing us anything, and believe me, I know that they're taking valuable time away from. From their family and their businesses to help us. And so while your, your, your question is absolutely legitimate, uh, I think that the implementation of at least the first part uh, is, no, is not uh, cost sensitive. It can actually benefit us from the very first day by providing that information uh, to our businesses. Randy? Go ahead. Didi, right? Didi. I'm yep. Randy. Nice to meet you. We've met before. Oh, yeah. I, um, I think, you know, when it comes to implementation as well, it's going to be dispersed against uh, across whichever agencies decide they want to do with what. Right. In other words, you know, we'll be providing 
Oh, I'm sorry. You need to get closer to the mic. You get to the microphone. You sure. can go ahead. Um, in other words, you know, we'll provide to the university a system. We'll provide to the city a system. We'll provide to the chamber a system. You know, anybody who wants to play, we'll give them a lot of di different collateral. It's up to them as to what parts of that or all of that they want to implement. And so, in other words, we aren't relying upon just one source, for example, the city to pay for it all. It would just it'd be up to each of those agencies. Now, there are some specific items, for example, the wayfinding signing system that you saw. I mean, that's certainly a cost. And, and it's, it's one thing to design it. It's a whole other thing to fabricate and install it. And there certainly would be additional cost. Happy to give you estimates of you know similar systems in other places. but. Um, Again, there's going to be a whole lot of different bits and pieces and parts of the system that we accommodate through a lot of different agencies. So my concern here is, and I'll just leave it at this, and it's not that I don't, I think you'd probably do a fabulous job. You're probably great at your job. But this predates the mayor and it predates Mr. Clem. We have been here and we have done this. We have had strategic, we have had surveys, we've had meetings with the business community over and over. I have been downstairs with flip charts and colored dots and a lot of the other folks in this room have too and nothing comes of it. Nothing comes, I don't even know where the reports are. Like you said, they've been shelved. My concern is spending money on yet another shelved project. When the easiest thing to do is to walk downtown, and I've seen some of you do it and I applaud you, and talk to business owners Ask them why they move out when they leave. How about an exit study? Excuse me, why are you leaving downtown to move outside the city limits of Aiken? That would be great. Why did, why did your business not make it? Why do you think you failed? I mean, I know you do exit interviews with, some of, with your employees, I believe. How about exit interviews with some of the businesses? And start to collect the data from them. I fear spending money, again, on another shelved project because I've seen it too often. Thanks. Thank you, Dee. We're going to have an opportunity for comment when we when we read this. Uh, Randy was gracious enough to stay and do this present presentation for us. So I appreciate that. We'll entertain obviously more discussion on, on the agenda item, so it's not pushing that aside. But I, I appreciate you staying and, and uh, making the presentation again to us. Be safe on your way back to uh, Columbia. And thank you for those comments and questions. Moving down presentations to number three, this is a presentation by Energy Environmental Committee regarding the use and disposal of plastic bags. Ron, good evening. Good evening. Yes. We have Andy. I'm Ron Delamora, Chairman of the Energy and Environmental Committee, and tonight uh, Andy Hallam, who's also on the committee, serves as our Vice President, will be making our presentation. The last couple of times that I've been up here discussing things with council that's focused on Earth Day related activities. And tonight what we want to do is kind of pivot from Earth Day to what I'm going to loosely call litter control. That will be kind of the thesis uh, of our message this evening. <clears throat> it's, it's interesting that we've all seen in the, uh, in the papers that South Carolina as a state is, is seen as one of the dirtiest states from a litter standpoint uh, in the country. Um, every day or two we get to see something and talk back about litter control or lack thereof. Um, all of us have been down the Aiken County uh, roads and we can see the mess that exists on the Aiken County roads. It's a problem that's not getting any better. Uh, the, the litter problem here in the city is nowhere near as severe as it is in the county, but we do have our hot spots that are deserving of attention. So, so it's an ongoing issue, and what we want to do is take a, uh, it's kind of interesting, I'll, I'll, we've heard the word vision quite a few times tonight, and uh, the vision of our committee is that we would like to see a cleaner environment, a cleaner city, and a cleaner county. And so Andy's going to walk through a proposal here with some suggestions that we'd like council to make that should result in a lower um, cost for the city as well as improved reunification. So with that, I'll turn it over to Andy. Good evening. <clears throat> Allow me to introduce myself before I start. As Ron said, my name is Andy Hallen. This is my third year in Aiken, my second year on the Environmental and Energy Committee, and I think of myself as an environmentalist. But what about you? If you wake up in the morning and step outside and savor that first breath of fresh air, you might be an environmentalist. If you like taking a walk through the downtown area 
or one of our fine parks, but are disgusted when you come across litter, you might be an environmentalist. And if you then go out of your way to pick up and properly dispose of that letter, my friends, you are definitely an environmentalist. But whether you're an environmentalist or not, you need to be aware that there is an environmental catastrophe looming in our future. And I'm not talking about global warming, which is difficult to understand with controversial solutions. I'm talking about an expanding environmental time bomb that can easily and effectively diffuse with limited effort. I am, of course, talking about plastic bag. And today, I'm going to tell you why they're a problem, what can be done about them, what's being done elsewhere, and then suggest a course of action for Aiken. Plastic bags. We all know how terrible they are. They litter our streets and byways. They wash down our storm drains, eventually making their way into our rivers, lakes, and oceans. They choke wildlife. They increase the demand for oil. And because it is impractical to recycle them, 90% end up in the landfill where they maintain residence for up to 1,000 years. So how big is this problem? An estimated 500 billion to 1 trillion plastic bags are used worldwide every year. 380 billion of these in the U.S. The population of the U.S. is 319 million. That's over 1,000 bags every year for every man, woman, and child. Now, if you extrapolate that to Aiken, that's 30 million bags every year consumed just in the city of Aiken. 27 million of those end up in our landfill. The other 3 million, they end up as litter. This is a picture taken by Norm Dunnigan of Dumpster Depot. These are plastic bags that Dumpster Depot removed from recyclable materials in just one day. All these bags ended up in the landfill. So if bags are so bad, why are they so ubiquitous? Well, plastic bags are cheap, convenient, transporting purchases, making them popular with consumers and retailers. But at the same time, plastic bags are making a deep imprint on the planet. There is a stew of trash in the Pacific that's estimated at twice the size of Texas and weighs 3.5 million tons. 80% of this is plastic. And as you can see, there are multiple reservoirs of trash like that in the oceans of our world. And perhaps just as importantly, plastic bags can be mistaken by wildlife and domesticated animals for food. This makes plastic bag pollution particularly dangerous. As more than 100,000 animals every year ingest these bags and die from intestinal blockages. So what can be done about this problem? There are four accepted solutions. The first is enhanced education. Teach consumers, encourage them to use reusable bags. Secondly, you can enhance education and ban disposable plastic bags. Third, you can have enhanced education and have a mandatory advanced recovery fee, that's a fancy word for tax, on plastic bags. Or lastly, you could have a tax 
on all bags, plastic and paper. This chart, which was prepared by an environmental study group for the city of Seattle, Washington, shows the effectiveness of each approach. Now this is a bit confusing, so I'm gonna walk you through it. At the top, it shows the different approaches you can take. This status quo shows the net present cost if you do nothing. So if you do nothing, you still have 100% of the cost. If you do just education, you don't get very much benefit. You still have 96 or 97% of the cost. So that doesn't work too well. The best approach by far, as you can see highlighted right here, is the damn plastic bags. This has the largest effect on reducing litter and reducing the cost of managing your litter. More than 20 countries and more than 170 jurisdictions in the U.S. have already passed legislation to address this bag problem. I thought these highlights were interesting. The first country to ban bags, plastic bags, was Bangladesh back in 2002. And they did it primarily, oops, primarily to prevent flooding. Mauritania banned plastic bags to protect the environment and save lives of their animals. More than 70% of the cattle and sheep that die in the capital were killed by eating plastic bags. China banned plastic bags by 2008, in 2008. And right here in South Carolina, the Isle of Palms issued their bag ban in January of this year. Here are some notable successes. In Ireland, bag consumption dropped by 90% within a few months of passing a 15 cent tax on bags. IKEA in the US saw a 92% drop in plastic bag usage after one year with a five cent charge. And South Australia led that nation with a ban on plastic shopping bags. Today, nine out of 10 shoppers bring reusable bags to the store with them. So by my count, plastic bags are the enemy, and there are several attractive approaches to attack them. But you should be aware that not everybody uses them as the enemy. Powerful special interest groups are campaigning against these bans. Primary among them is the Progressive Bag Affiliates funded by the largest plastic bag manufacturers in the country. And California, which was the first to pass a statewide ban, has become the main battleground. Opponents of the California law launched an effort to overturn that measure within days of its approval and have spent millions of dollars to stop the ban by getting a, refer sorry, a referendum put on the ballot this November. They're going to lose because 90 of those 170 jurisdictions that ban bags are in California. Ladies and gentlemen, Aiken has a proud tradition of being on the forefront of environmental action, being the first municipality in this region to begin, begin recycling. Eliminating disposable plastic bags is the next frontier. And although we will not be the first in leading this charge, it's time for us to take a step forward. I propose we take a stand by adopting legislation similar to the ban passed by the City of Isle of Palms. That we make it effective one year after passage, and that we use that year to explain to our citizens why plastic bags are a problem, and to encourage consumers and retailers to work together to make the transition to reusable bags transparent. For your further information, consideration, and action, I have given each of you a copy of the law passed by the City of Isle of Palms. 
You will note in this legislation that we are not asking for a ban on all plastic bags. Just those lightweight, one-use, small chop shopping bags that can be easily and effectively eliminated. Thereby making a major step forward in our battle with litter. Any questions? Well, I've got a, I've got a question, Andy. Uh, all the way through here, you're talking about plastic bags. Have you guys explored the possibility of using biodegradable paper bags, or what would be the effect if uh, the uh, plastic was banned and then, uh, you know, would, it, would the environmental effects be just as bad if we used uh, degradable paper bags? Well, paper bags are not as, not as bad as paper, as plastic. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Isle of Palms, when I went down there to talk to them about their ban, I talked, went in one of the grocery stores and I talked to them about it, and they are actually, for people that don't come in with a refusable bag, they're giving them one of these. But it has a lot of advertising on here about recycling. So paper bags are acceptable. If they want to, if the grocery chains or other retailers would like to use paper bags instead, this is a good example. But key is eliminating the plastic bags that are causing all the problem. How strong are those bags? Um, can they hold meats if you this, this stop one, for your meats in the grocery small, yeah. store? Can, can I see? Yeah. A lot stronger than ones you usually get. By the way, I didn't know we had a paper bag, so it wasn't a planted question. Ms. <laughs> Diggs, <laughs> does it pass the... Uh, uh -huh. it, it's pretty good. It's a, stronger than bags I've seen in the... I'd like, to, I'd like to thank you for your presentation and the Environmental <laughs> Committee for, for bringing this forward. I, I think okay. a good place we could... Absolutely. Right. I think one of the first things I'd like to say is we, we have our, our Channel 4 programming. I'd love to see a, a program mm -hmm. uh, with, with the statistics and the information that you gave, so I'd like to put that together also. Okay. So, uh, but thank you for well, being here me, today. Let me just close by thanking you for your attention and consideration. The Environmental and Energy Committee looks forward to a timely passage of the ban and to working with you mm -hmm. and the business community to make Aiken a more litter-free an environmentally friendly city. And, and I, I guess I'm making an assumption, but this comes from the committee as a recommendation. Right. And your committee members are here tonight. I think I see yes. Norm, Norman and, can, can, you, can you guys please stand, please? Thank you. Um, I, I just wanna add uh, that Anything is possible. Uh, years ago when this environmental committee, uh, it wasn't always the energy environmental committee, but it was the environmental committee when uh, it was established, and, and I'm happy to have recommended the establishment of that, that committee uh, years ago and to change the name, name to energy and environment. That being said, anything is, is possible. And I look at Sam's, and when you go in Sam's, can you get a paper bag? A plastic bag? Get in it, <laughs> You get a car. It, it's possible to, to buy your goods without having those bags in the stores. So it can be done. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make, <clears throat> make one additional comment. This, this is another area where we could very effectively work with the county. The county has recognized a litter problem uh, <clears throat> within the county. This is an easy thing to do. I'd ask all members of council to read their law. There's enough exceptions to make it very applicable uh, to Aiken, and perhaps we can work with the county. I think Ed Joby is heading that committee up. He is. And perhaps we can work with them and uh, either have a work session or just steal the ordinance outright and pass it. I agree, Good job. Good work. The county and the city should agree on a verbiage. Yes. I, I think that will be an easy win for both of us. Thank you. We're going to move down to old business at this time.
Number one, under old business is approval of appointments and discussion of appointees of various city boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, any comments from staff? Uh, Mr. Mayor, council has 22 pending appointments to fill vacancies on different city boards, commissions, and committees. Councilman Dewar has recommended the appointment of Richard Funkhauser to the General Aviation Commission to fill the position of Don Barnes. If appointed, Mr. Funkhauser's term would, be, uh, would expire September 1st, 2018. Councilman Ebner has recommended the appointment of Rebecca Vignier to the Municipal Election Commission to fill the unexpired term of Ray Visosky. If appointed, her term would expire uh, August 2019. Election Commission members are appointed by Council at large in terms of for six years. Also, at the Council's request, the Equine Committee has recommended the appointment of Alice Knowles and Maureen Quinn to the Equine Committee. Uh, for council consideration is the appointment of Richard Funkhauser to the General Aviation Commission and the appointment of Rebecca Vignier to the Municipal Election Commission. Also for council consideration is the appointment of Alice Knowles and Maureen Quinn to the Equine Committee. Thank you, Mr. Clem. Is there a motion to accept these appointments? <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I move approval of uh, all four appointments. Second, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Are there any names to be moved to be considered at our next meeting? I would like to make one comment, that is to uh, commend uh, City Clerk Sarah Rideout for giving us all information on people who have volunteered uh, to serve on boards and commissions. I would sort of ask us all to make sure that our names are not on this list. Please, let's make some appointments. We've got the people now. Uh, and that does not even include the, the Chamber of Commerce, which has given us an Excel spreadsheet with I don't know how many names. So uh, the excuse for not filling all of these positions um, is just not there. So I plead with people to make the appointments. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Dwar. Moving down old business number two. This is a second reading and public hearing of an ordinance authorizing the City of Aiken to enter into a development agreement with Hemball Walton Way Investments, LLC, for the development of property located at 2270 Whiskey Road. Uh, by title, an ordinance authorizing the City of Aiken to enter into a development agreement with Hemball LLC for development of property located at 2270 Whiskey Road. There we go again. All right, is there a motion? No move, Mr. Mayor. I have a motion, a second? I'll second. second. All right, comments from staff. Uh, Mr. Mayor, in September of 2015, the City Council gave us permission to have Haas and Hillebrand study the feasibility of extending sanitary sewer and storm sewer infrastructure from the property boundary formerly occupied by TD Bank to the south and to Krispy Kreme and Harbor Freight Tools to the north. The analysis was completed in December of 2015 and shared with Henbell Walton Way Investments, LLC, as part of their development of the Krispy Kreme and Harbor Freight property. As part of these improvements, they will extend storm sewer and sanitary sewer to the northern edge of this parcel. As potential development occurs on this property at the intersection of Beatty Lane and Whiskey Road, connections for this infrastructure will be available. A development agreement has been prepared for the city to pay up to $20,500 for sanitary sewer and $18,000 for stormwater to Henbell Walton Way Investments, LLC, as part of their improvements to this uh, property. Engineering and utility staff have reviewed the cost for the project and recommended this work. City Council approved this ordinance on first reading on July 11, 2016. For City Council approval, a second reading and public hearing of an uh, ordinance authorizing the City of Aiken to enter into a development agreement with Henbell Walton Way Investments, LLC, for the development of property located at 2270 Whiskey Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thomas Nolans. Mayor and Councilman, I'm Dennis Trotter from Henville, Walton Way Investments, and Jordan Trotter, Commercial Real Estate. Happy to answer any questions y'all have about the uh, petition in front of you tonight. Council, have any questions? Thank you. Stick around in case there are some. Any other comments from the audience? Okay, comments, questions from Council? 
Okay. All those on favor of second reading? Sorry. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Number three under old business. This is approval of CHA contract for the Northside Park. Is there a motion? I so move. A motion. Is there a second? Second. Right, we have a second. Comments from staff. Uh, Mr. Mayor, at the June 27th, 2016 meeting, City Council directed staff to draft an updated contract with CHA so we can proceed with phase one of the Northside Park. This updated contract will enable them to shepherd us through this first part of the project, which will include green space, a one mile trail, an amphitheater, an ADA accessible playground, and amphitheater along with necessary infrastructure. Staff, the city attorney, and CHA have reviewed the modified contract the council approved on November 23rd, 2015, that contains the following updated terms, uh, terms as listed in the agenda. The City Council approval is a contract with CHA for the Northside Park. <clears throat> Any comments from the audience? Comments or questions from Council? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the, uh, we need to attach uh, the approval of the concept plan and the financial, financial number as presented uh, back in June 21st. Those three pages, one is the concept plan that was approved and also the financial value that's referred to in this ordinance needs to be attached to it. And it's not an exhibit, I want an attachment. Yes, I, well we call them exhibits. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the difference between an exhibit and an attachment is, but it, it will be attached to the contract. What happens, I'll tell you my experience. And I order a copy of an ordinance if it has uh, appendices or a lot of times those don't come through. Right. So I would like it to be a part of it so if we call it up, it shows up all pages. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, oh yeah, <coughs> she does. Okay. <laughs> all right. Very good. So this needs to be referred to, please. Do yes. I need to amend that to include it or not? The, um, the amendment would be to include this document as an attachment to the existing contract that we have with CHA. Well said. <coughs> That's my amendment. Thank you. This, All right, so you're making that, that as a motion? Yes. Is that accepted? I'll yes. second that. Well, uh, Gail and I will both. Why? Yeah. Who made the original motion? And I seconded. I do. Do you, you accept that amendment? Yes. In the second? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So we're considering that with the original amendment, with the original motion. <coughs> Any other comments? All those in favor? <coughs> and that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down the agenda to new business. This is first reading of an ordinance to amend zoning of property owned by Michael Calhoun on Town Creek Road from residential to office institutional uh, by title and ordinance amending the zoning of real estate owned by Michael Calhoun from residential single family RS-6 to office site. <coughs> Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Comments from staff. Mr. Mayor, Michael Calhoun, the owner and developer of a property on the south side of Town Creek Road, just off of Silver Bluff Road, has requested that a 0.73 acre parcel in one half lot consisting of 0.65 acres be rezoned from residential single family to office. In May of 2002, uh, 2015, Mr. Calhoun requested and received approval to rezone some property on Town Creek Road from RS-6 to office. This request would be an expansion of the existing adjacent zoning to provide the acreage needed to accommodate additional office buildings and to rectify the split residential single family RS-6 and office zones across Track 2. Presently, the property is zoned RS-6 and the office and professional uses are not allowed within the RS-6 uh, zone. The Planning Commission at their July 12, 2016 meeting reviewed Mr. Calhoun's request for rezoning. After review, uh, the Planning Commission voted 6 to 1 to recommend approval of the rezoning to office zoning for property on Town Creek Road as requested. 
for council consideration is first reading of an ordinance to rezone a 0.73 acre parcel in one half lot of a 0.65 acre parcel from residential single family to office. Upon council approval, second reading and public hearing of the ordinance will be held at the next regular meeting of the city council. Any comments from the audience? I think Mr. Calhoun is here. Could you come up, Mike? I got a question. All right. We'll recognize comments and questions from council this time. Mike, thank you for being with us tonight. Oh, sure. Um, Mike Calhoun. I uh, live at 212 Sweet Gum Court uh, here in Aiken. Uh, this is, I've been here several times yes, uh, over the last you're a regular couple, visitor. couple years. <laughs> and this is sort of finalizing this project. Um, it's, you know, like I said, if you have any question, I know I could react. I do. Uh, from the from the get go, you've had some neighbors that have been very disappointed uh, with, with the trees here. that have gone down. And I could give you, you know, um, there were two issues that we were dealing dealing with on this property. <coughs> One was an elevation difference that mm -hmm. you wouldn't normally recognize. You don't really know until you start getting into the, you know, get it, you know, getting your. Um, your surveys and topo surveys and doing your engineering. The other issue I had here is there's no outfall. So if you look at the plan, there's this, almost 40% of the property is retention. And that was to prohibit there being a, an issue. You know, we had a, what, 1200 year storm event a couple years ago. And in a big storm event like that, I just didn't want there to ever be a problem with a neighbor with a neighboring property and this property if you go the sort of the uh, the northeast corner has an elevation of about 500 feet if you go di diagonally to the southwest corner it's about 470 something feet so it's a huge drop and so the balancing being sure that we could hold water on that site balancing the site there's really was no way to keep trees so and that would have been true <clears throat> i appreciate that if you ever developed it but there's I appreciate I that, but when you started, people felt they were not going to have to look at a building, that they were still going to have trees to look at. So uh, it yeah, was, it's, it's, if none are here tonight, I'll, I'll vote to approve it. But I just had to make that, that comment. The other, the, other, the other issue is normally when you there's the properties to the, uh, the south boundary of it, there was already a 10-foot existing easement where there were no trees. That was, and so all we did is expose an existing easement. Normally, you would have trees there, so it, a lot of these things were sort of. That's a utility easement, isn't it? It's a utility easement. That's so probably usually, usually, so. usually utility easements don't have trees on them. Right, that's what I'm saying. But that was part of this property, with the easement. So, you know, when we developed the property, what we did is expose that easement. I, I thought in the I thought there was supposed to be a 20 foot buffer. Is is, is that not required between a residential and and this? Because I, I thought I we asked exactly. That. I mean, we did exactly what the code was. And and then once you know once we plant back the trees and stuff like that, you know, but it's it's and again that that building sits so high with that retention pond. There's just no again. It's the elevation difference that taking the trees down exposes. So that's sort of what the is know. there room between the retention pond and no no not I mean you're you're on that eat you're on that easement you're on that easement and we didn't build any buildings back there it's just part of the retention pond so is there any other thank you All right, no other questions or comments. All those in favor on first reading? All opposed? One opposed. Moving down to new business number two, first reading of an ordinance to amend the concept plan from Monday's Corner, located on Whiskey Road at Powderhouse Road. A title and ordinance amending the concept plan from Monday's Corner, LLC. Is there a motion? Did we? I uh, still move. I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll no, second. All over the house. Comments from staff. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Monday's Corner LLC 
the applicant and owner has requested approval of a revised concept plan designated as option A for a convenience store and 10 double-sided fuel dispensers to be located at the corner of Whiskey Road and Powderhouse Road. The applicant is also requesting that the original concept plan granted by the City Council be designated as option B. Option B consists of a convenience store, a car wash, and six two-sided fuel dispensers. The purpose of this designation is to allow the owner to develop the property as set forth in option A or option B without having to come back to the city for reconsideration. Property at 2948 Whiskey Road consists of one lot with road front frontage on Whiskey Road and Powderhouse Road. This property was the previous location of the Monday's package store and shops. The Planning Commission at their July 12, 2016 meeting reviewed the request for the revision of the concept plan and unanimously recommended approval to the City Council with the following recommendations as uh, uh, issued in the uh, agenda. For City Council consideration is first reading of an ordinance to amend the concept plan for 2948 Whiskey Road, which was approved by Ordinance 01252016A, and allow the owner to develop the property as set forth in Option A or Option B with the conditions as listed without having to come back to the city for reconsideration. And I do know, Mr. Mayor, there are representatives of the uh, developer here present this evening to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Plum. Any comments from the audience? Yes, sir. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this gentleman. <clears throat> Michael Ocasio, six six eight Kensington Court in Aiken. I'm the president of the Kensington Property Owners Association. We uh, uh, the association is in, in favor of the development of the Monday's Corner property. Um, anything could be an improvement. Okay, from what we have now. Uh, and uh, I feel certain that business will thrive, will be a success. And uh, plan B, okay, which is the without car wash, is what our preference is. Okay, just to make that well known. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate it. Okay, any other comments? Yes, sir. Good evening, Council, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Philip Green, 1233 Augusta West Parkway. Um, we also are coming back to you uh, after a short period of time with a revised concept. Um, the potential client that we had um, changed um, some of their prototype stores, uh, got rid of the car wash, um, and moved some of the parking up to, up to the front, so we're back uh, before you with the revised concept. Uh, it, Substantially the same. Uh, we had a traffic study redone. I'm sure all that's in, in your packet. Um, and we're willing to uh, abide by all the uh, recommendations made by uh, the Planning Commission. I'd be glad to answer any questions uh, that you might have. Uh, also, uh, your revised concept plan, you got a more of a stack up making a right turn on to Whiskey. Is that not true? Yes, you were able to uh, extend that down because the, uh, the way you did the concept and is there a, a right turn area going to be there now or not? The recommendations in the traffic study are for a dedicated right turn lane uh, for that northbound moving on to uh, on to Whiskey. This will leave one of the problems that came up when the other buildings were built there, if you recall. Uh, and so this gives a right turn area and some other and more backup <coughs> off of Powder House. And also in the in the traffic study, there's also a, a dedicated movement for the uh, left turn off of Whiskey. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? Any other comments or questions from council? All, right. All those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down to number three under new business. This is a first reading of an ordinance to amend ordinance number 02222016 regarding rod repairs, road, I'm sure that's supposed to be road repairs, right? Road repairs and Jim Lakes extension. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. I second. We have a motion and second. Comments from staff? 
Uh, Mr. Mayor, the council, as you know, approved spending uh, for funding through an inter-fund borrowing to repair Moultrie Drive and Huron Drive in Gem Lake's extension. A recent bid opening was conducted and the successful uh, bidder, the best bid, came from the Miller Group of Morrow, Georgia. This group has extensive experience performing the full depth reclamation that the council selected as the preferred repair method for the road. The cost is $285,253.80. Rick Toole uh, and George Grinton had have met with the contractor to review the bid and recommend we proceed with the Miller Group with a proposed amount of $300,000 to include contingency. We believe the cost will ultimately be lower as much of the excavated material can be used by city staff for other projects instead of being hauled off to a landfill. If Council accepts this proposal and passes the ordinance at first reading, we would like to have a second reading at a special meeting on August 16th because the contractor could begin work by the end of August before they leave the area to work for several months in the state of Alabama. For council consideration is first reading and public hearing of an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2016-17 budget to repair roads in Gem Lakes Extension. Thank you, Mr. Clinton. Any comments from the audience? Comments or questions from council? All, right, all those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. And I, I'm sure we'll be advertising a special meeting on August 16th. Well, that will also be the day that the Finance and Administrative Committee will meet to discuss some uh, uh, items as well. You need to advertise that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, well. Okay. All right, thank you. Moving down to number four. This is a request to spend hospitality tax money for market analysis and branding and marketing. Is there a motion? I'll move with the mayor. Yeah, a motion, is there a second? Second. Mayor. And a second. As a reminder, this is what we had the presentation on earlier in the, in the meeting tonight. Uh, comments from staff? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would just like to add uh, several comments and then certainly open it up to the general public. Uh, I am very mindful of the comments that were made earlier and understand the level, the level of frustration uh, that uh, certain actions uh, in the past have not led to the kind of the productivity and the results that, that some may have expected. But I also am mindful that we went through a strategic planning process and the last thing that we want to happen is that for that strategic planning process and for the hundreds and hundreds of people that turned out at these meetings or that were interviewed by our, our, our team that, that uh, came to Aiken, that that study become a study sitting on a shelf collecting dust. Uh, and, and, and in reviewing the strategic plan, the logical next step, the gaping holes for us to be successful are, are, are several uh, fold. One is that we simply don't have the type of analysis and information that we need to conduct a scientific and a professional job at retaining and supporting existing businesses downtown or and or recruiting uh, new businesses to the open spaces in our downtown area. We don't have that market analysis. And I realize it, my staff realizes it, many of the people that, that participated in this process uh, realize it. Our Main Street management team, some of whose members are present this evening that have volunteered many hours to the betterment of our downtown area, who are business people downtown, know that this type of information is absolutely necessary. Necessary. All I can say is to, through you, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mayor, and to the council, that we are cognizant that there is a history of studies being conducted uh, with less than uh, fruitful results. We're aware of that, and so are the downtown business people uh, that we have we have be, uh, been working with. You know, people uh, have raised the issue about how much we're sp spending uh, on, on this type of analysis. I would remind all of you at the tax dollars that our business people contribute each and every year to this to this uh, community uh, so, so I would suggest that investing uh, some money to bolster to support to inc hopefully increase and expand our business activity is a good thing uh, I am respectful 
I am understanding of the comments that were made and I will do everything in my power to make sure, and I know that our Main Street's team uh, feels the same way, uh, that we need a very high bar of accountability. Uh, we can't be studying things to death with no action. We need action to be part of our Main Street's uh, uh, approach. Uh, that's my commitment. I know that's John McMichael's commitment. I know it's your commitment, Mr. Mayor, and it's the commitment of the city that we're just not going to we're not going to throw good money a, a, after bad and not have results. This needs to be a results-oriented approach. Uh, we're all recognizing uh, that, but there are fu fundamentally when when both insiders, meaning Aiken residents who have looked at this issue and outsiders have looked at this issue, there's some fundamental gaps that need to be uh, addressed. And the first is that market analysis to give us the information necessary to help existing businesses do better downtown and to encourage uh, more businesses to consider moving into our uh, open uh, uh, stores, uh, storefronts downtown to make what is a wonderful downtown even better. All right. Thank you, Mr. Clinton. I'll open it up to comments from the audience at this time. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Good evening. Barbara Stafford, 1310 College and Ave. Um, I just wanted to say first that I agree with Didi. And also, I wanted to know, did the city of Aiken pay the consulting firm that came to that big, exciting meeting in the room downstairs with the dots and the flip paper? Wasn't there a consulting firm that came and did that? Yes. Did the city, was that part of the, what was, what was that cost? Uh, I, I have mentioned to, to Ms. Vaughters that I would be more than glad tomorrow to present a detail. Okay. I can't tell, I don't want to give you misinformation. Okay. I haven't um, committed that to memory in terms of well, the dollar Well, it just amount. seems to me, too, that the hospitality um, tax fund, <clears throat> I mean, in terms of revenues coming into the city, that's pure profit. And, and I don't think that it should be such a, a light thing to just dip into that fund and fill in the blanks where you think you might need them, you know, because and with the thought that you can always go back and get more. So. And, and that's a fair comment. And let, let me just say that that, that money is, is, first of all, by, by state statute committed to, I think there's five five or six items specifically. Well, I, re I reread it today before I came to the meeting and, and looked up a few other things as well. Um, I just, I just, I did write an editorial that was published on Friday and I do have concerns about um, input from the taxpayers being ignored and also about projects just being forgotten and shelved. I, I think there's been more than enough and I think every, everybody on, on well, council in this room can probably ag agree with you on that. Okay. I can only give you my commitment that okay. we're going to work. I think it's important for any citizen or taxpayer to come forward and say what's on their mind and I'm not going to hold back. And it deserves to be heard. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you this, I think the market analysis is a very important component to moving forward. It, it is, and I do agree with you. And that presentation was really great, except for that it sort of smacked me of, uh, it was like a more professional overview about what ha took place downstairs, I think it was last winter. It, or it was, you're right, the first of this year. And at that um, presentation, I can't remember who it was um, that said to um, all the taxpayers or citizens that were there that the results would be in in about, um, I think, April. Mm -hmm. It was the comment, and I've been asking um, on a couple of occasions through different channels, like, so where are the results? I, so, I, the it, reports on our website. It, 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 well, I. Th it is, but I, I would be glad to get with you. Well, I read. I mean, I read and I looked, but I wasn't satisfied. Okay. I, I think this is the next step that we that we go into to do it, and it's it's a progression, obviously. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, yes. taking the taking the information, and, and I, I hear what you're saying too, and right. I think we're saying the same thing. Taking the information is all well and good mm -hmm. if it makes citizens feel warm and fuzzy. <clears throat> well, we've done that, but at what people want to see is implementation. Well, and, and you're saying you'd well, like to see it in April. Warm and fuzzy, but now it's going to the point of like insulted because you've just ignored us for months. It, it's going to the point of implementation now. Okay. And I'm sorry it wasn't in April. I wish it was done in April also. Well, me too, but, I, but I can tell you we've had, we've had the Main Street program working working with committees, trying to get things set up as well. Right. So. I mean, I've seen the Main Street program information on, on your website or on our website. 
but um, it just didn't connect to me that it was part of what happened downstairs last winter. It just seemed to me like, oh, we qualified for this other thing later, and that was after that meeting. Anyway, I, so I would like to participate in this. I really would. I would like but for I, you to participate. But I'm not going to just, you know, you know, sit back. Nobody's going to come knocking on my door to ask me. So I might. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mr. Jordan. Uh, Jeffrey Jordan, 130 Robin Wood Drive. I've spent three years trying to figure out how to get people to drive five miles from the south side to downtown, and I haven't figured it out yet. So if there's someone that can come in and give my business concrete trends, points of action, points of action to the city to help promote downtown within our own city. And you know, oftentimes we want to promote Aiken to other towns, I run into people all the time on the south side. They haven't been past south boundary in 10 years. They don't even know that we have a south uh, a downtown. They have no idea what's going on down here. And it's four miles from here. So it would be nice for somebody to tell a business owner like me, this is what people are looking for trend-wise, and these are the things that we can do to help your business promote the downtown area. Because you know we're in the center of downtown right here. So. A lot of nice work being done. It's a showcase down here, and we have to help people make that mental leap to come four miles. So, you know, any information we can get as a business that somebody else is paying for um, <laughs> would be definitely helpful. Um, but when the group comes along with the, with the parks, especially and puts in a program to utilize, which is a great resource that we have here. But when we start recommending taking branches off of a tree and cutting a bush back, that people don't have a heart attack and not want to implement these things, which I think sometimes causes those things to move forward because people make recommendations and it's not palatable to some people and they don't want to move forward with recommendations. So there's got to be some political will here when, when recommendations are made to actually follow through with what the recommendations are based on majority common sense, I think. So I, as a business owner, would welcome information to help recruit and attract to see what people really, I mean, I have an opinion on what people want, but I don't have any anything to back it up with. So some backup and some proof scientific, I think, is what we're calling it, uh, would be nice. So thanks. Thank you, Jeff. And Jeff and his brother own Trio's a restaurant is the business he's referring to. Any other comments? <clears throat> no, yeah. Good evening. Hello, I'm Jane Page Thompson, 240 Knox Avenue. Um, there are a couple of things I just want to quickly ask. Is the city of Aiken still a member of the lower council of governments? Yes. yes. Are you still a member of the municipal association and paying funds to be so? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, do you know the functions of both of those organizations that you already pay money for include this very project as a part of your membership fee? The Main Street program is actually, and I'm sure you know this, Jim. I got that. Yeah. The Main Street program has a very decided insider track. Let's bank cash with certain partners who are going to create certain images that are going to be unilaterally homogeneous across the state. I get, I, and, and I get Alabama and South Carolina, the guy that came and did his presentation represents that company. I did not get to see it because y'all moved it ahead on the agenda. I'm sorry, I did have work. But um, I just wanted to make, um, I'm not going to reiterate my well on the record documented concern that city council shelves things after a lot of us spend a lot of time working on them. You just had ULI come in and do a study. I know this is a second step of that ULI study, but I think ULI will charge a lot less to do the study than going to a second party outsider that happens to be a part of your Main Street program. If you're going to save money for the citizens, look outside your box. You said that you've talked to people in the city of Aiken, and I wanted to ask you what um, Aiken insiders have you talked to, because if you haven't talked to Michael Bronchiato and Susie Haslip at Maybaum, you haven't talked to a CCIM member and an ALC member that are licensed in this city to do exactly what that man in Columbia wants to do for you. 
So if you haven't talked to those two people, have you all spoken with um, Michael or Susie at Maybaum? And yes, I'm not with Maybaum, and I am promoting another company because it means this much to me. There are two professionals that are in our marketplace that have a unique set of skills to give you the answers to the questions that are posed in both your agenda item four and agenda item five tonight. And I bet you, knowing how dedicated Susie Haslip is to the city of Aiken, she'd probably give you an analysis, probably a, a lot less than $22,000. Um, I know that we've gone through wayfinding in the last six years. We've gone through logo rebranding and, and website rebranding in the last eight years. I don't need to tell you all that. But I do want to make some suggestions. Um, I think you should spend $50,000 of hospitality tax money to help the local businesses by paying a lobbyist to lobby Columbia to get rid of the business fixtures tax that businesses have to pay on their computers, their furniture, and their shelves in their stores. I think that you should spend some of this money to give Mr. Clem an education about Aiken. I think that we have to have leaders that manage our city that know that Huron is Huron and not Huron. We, could, we need to set up an Jane Page. exit interview process. Excuse me. Sorry, I thought I had four minutes. I'm just going. I'm just going to say you can keep your comments to the uh, item, okay. not individual. I know please. that you've got a lot of money. You're about to spend forty-six thousand dollars. Mr. Mayor, and before you spend $46,000 on something that you've already spent that money on at least four or five times in my immediate recollection, I suggest you look at the outcome of the, the April or February <coughs> meeting that those individual people said, and a lot of those points were you need to set up an exit interview process and you need to have your finance department follow up with people who are no longer paying a business license and ask them why they left. I'd like to see you do those things before you come up with a really cute logo or a new website. And I'm just asking you to delay spending any more money after what is clearly shelved projects or information that is at your fingertips for a lot less money that you just haven't bothered to go look for. That's all I'm suggesting. And I think that transportation needs to be a part of your plan ahead of time and not at the back end. And a modified transportation plan is something that the city can certainly implement with your hospitality tax revenue. You can do a nine stop, um, use the trolley and create a transportation plan. Spend that 50 grand smart first and then come back and ask us for a market analysis and money for a logo. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? Yes, sir. Good evening, Nathan Powell, 1020 Spalding Avenue. And my question is relatively simple. Um, not too long ago, we had some discussion over a study that was done. Was it the Aiken Regional Transportation Study and the whole bike paths and things like that? Um, I'm wondering if Randy, uh, in his presentation, I saw he had some nice mention of parkways and had some fantastic images up there with bicycles and parks and whatnot. I'm wondering if his scope of work would encompass that or are we going to keep the whole bicycle path, someone else running on that track separately or parallel with what he plans on doing with the Main Street study? Sure. John, you want to? I mean, I, I, he, he certainly has communicated with, with leaders of uh, the various organizations that are interested in, in alternative tra transportation. Gary Sullivan, for example. Uh, Tom Lex, uh, yeah. another example. Uh, I certainly will pass on to him when I talk to him uh, tomorrow uh, what your comments were and, and uh, certainly will pursue that to make sure there is a coordination. Yeah, it seems like he's plenty capable yep. set to, to incorporate that into his work. Um, I don't know where we're at if things have progressed with that outside of his picking up and running with it, but um, that'd be fantastic if he could lend a hand to that. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Any other <clears throat> comments from the audience? Okay. Comments or questions from staff? Or council, I'm sorry. From council. All righty. All those in favor? That passage unanimous. Thank you. Business. This is number five, a resolution to enter into an agreement with the South Carolina Department of Transportation of right-of-way acquisition assistance. 
By title, this is a resolution authorizing the City of Aiken to enter into a contractual arrangement with the South Carolina Department of Transportation. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. We have a motion. Is there a second? Okay. I'm going to recognize John. Do you recognize it? On this. I would just like to say as part of our intersection improvement project at Whiskey Road and Doherty Road, uh, we have had many conversations with the state of uh, South Carolina Department of Transportation. Uh, they have offered to assist us with acquisition of the necessary, the additional necessary rights of way so that we can move forward on this project. The agreement before you would be necessary for, for us to commit. Uh, to partner with the uh, South Carolina Department of Transportation. Uh, our city attorney, Gary Smith, has been involved with the process, and I've asked Gary to make some comments and then to answer any questions uh, about we're, we're, what we have done so far and how we've gotten to where we are. I recognize our city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As I think most on council is aware, uh, the city has engaged in numerous different conversations with the owner of the property. Uh, I'll just refer to it as the bowling alley. Uh, and that the conversations that we have had with the owner have not resulted in a successful negotiation, uh, at least in terms of uh, acquisition price for the right of way. Uh, and the, the parties are pretty far apart. Uh, in order to move this project forward, the council's approved uh, some time ago. Uh, it appears it's necessary to get the um, South Carolina Department of Transportation involved, and they will go. They will move the process forward uh, with the acquisition of the right of way. All right, thank you. And I know we have the property owner here as well. So, are there any comments from the audience? Certainly. Good evening. Uh, Marianne Bundachok, 1310 Moultrie Drive, President of Tennis Lady Inc. Um, I just wanted to know if you have Exhibit A that's on page one of the agreement because I don't see it attached. It says uh, Exhibit A attached uh, plans. Yes. This document. <clears throat> if you want to come up and look at this, that's fine. I don't know. It's, it's the, this is attached to the resolution. This is the exhibit. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That's all. Any other comments from the audience? Yes, sir. Bill Kroll, 209 Foxley Trail. Had a question on uh, the right of way. From what I understand, the building is going to be left as it is, and you're just going to take up the uh, right of way up to the edge of the building. Is that correct? It's, I, I don't know that I can answer the question without having a copy of the plans, but it's. There it is. <coughs> It's shown on the plans what they're talking about taking. May I look? Yes, sir. That's the corner of Whiskey and Doherty Road where that green mm -hmm. slice okay. is. And that's this the existing building. Right. Okay. Uh, just as a, a matter of interest, um, I was on the uh, Regional Transportation uh, Committee for uh, about 15 years uh, representing this city under the uh, previous mayor. And uh, since moved on to other things. But at the same time, I look at that intersection and I realize what you're trying to do. The thing that bothers me tremendously is that you're going to be cutting across on the edge of the building. One of the main reasons you want to do that is, is because you've got a drain that needed to be fixed out because as you turn that corner to the right, your car will dip down 8, 10 inches. <coughs> It wobbles, it has fun with the suspension, everybody drives around it and goes down. And I guess my question is twofold. One is, is why don't you just fix the drain so that it rises up enough that you don't do that, people will turn the corner normally. Secondly, since you already have a right turn lane in existence, you have a left turn lane in existence, you also have the egress into from uh, Whiskey Road going down past um, Walgreen, 
you have enough, it appears, roadway already. Of course, if you need more, why don't you take out the sidewalk that is not used on the side next to Walgreen, although you may have a, uh, an agreement with Walmart, uh, Walgreen, I don't know. But uh, I've been in town, I don't know, 60 years, mm -hmm. and uh, I've watched the town grow. I realize that uh, that area is a mess. At the same time, though, I travel down that road probably four or five times a week, minimum. And um, I've been trying to remember, I think I've probably seen two people standing on that uh, sidewalk in the years since it's been built. So my question is, is why in the world is it even there? Why do you want to move power poles and deal with the drain lines and things when all you need to do is clear cut that sidewalk, leave the berm coming down from uh, Walgreen, pave the road, move it over five feet, you've got it all. It'll save you a heck of a lot of money compared to trying to do an eminent domain and take it away from somebody, whether they're reasonable or not makes no difference to me. I don't have a dog in the fight, except it just seems like you could use your money better. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate it. I'm going to ask George Gritton if he would to come up. Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you for being here. I think Rick, Rick Tool may be here too. He may be someone we could talk to on this. But could you explain why? I know we've talked about this before, but why why it can't move over towards the Walgreens or why that's not an option? Well, um, the whole project was designed by you know professional engineers who are road engineers, and the objective was to improve uh, throughput through the intersection and uh, install a uh, two right turn lanes so that uh, traffic would. Uh, uh, proceed f faster through that intersection, also provide more queuing area. The uh, stormwater um, drain, as the gentleman was saying, you know, does need to be corrected and will be corrected with the project. Um, we uh, would have to, uh, in order to do any projects on um, uh, state uh, roadways, you have to uh, obtain uh, encroachment permits from the state, and uh, they're not inclined to remove sidewalks when uh, sidewalks have been already installed. They actually want to, uh, you know, add sidewalks because they're very mindful of the fact that there are pedestrians. Um, if you talk to the uh, committee, uh, the art subcommittee for the pedestrian and, and bicycle. Um, which I happened to have a conversation just last week with the, the gentleman, uh, the co-chair actually was uh, surprised. He did a personal uh, evaluation with, a, with an activity that that subcommittee was doing. He, he actually was positioned at the Walgreens and he said he was absolutely surprised how many people were walking down that street. So uh, until you actually do a, a, a scientific evaluation, I don't think you can really say that the sidewalk's not needed. Um, the, uh, the amount of uh, right of way has been minimized, uh, but it is a requirement and uh, we could not uh, uh, convince SCDOT to uh, come up with a radius for the turn uh, that precluded uh, uh, removal of that little uh, 105 square foot uh, turning radius and of course um, utilities, that pole and, and so on would have to be relocated back. So has that answered the question? It does. I would, I would point out, Mr. Mayor, we did this in the other end of uh, Doherty. Um, many people may recall Silver Bluff coming down, turning right uh, on Doherty, did not have a dedicated right turn lane. And when we did, uh, it's a significantly improved that. Yes. And I think the expectation is he added second right turn lane coming down Doherty to Whiskey uh, will also significantly improve it. It backs up pretty far yes. on Doherty right now, and I would expect that this would uh, cut that down quite a bit. Yes, that's, that's, that is why we're doing the project. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brenton. Yes. <clears throat> I just wanted to say that I'm all in favor of SCDOT taking over the negotiation of the acquisition of the property 
if they can even bother to consider the business impact that it's having on my property, which as far as I know, no one has bothered to hear from me. So if SCDOT is willing to go the whole nine yards and, and, and determining all the impact that this is having on my property and not just the um, correction of Mr. Grinton, not 104 square feet, but 140 square feet, plus a huge amount of frontage that they're blocking from my uh, property. So as long as they're willing to consider all impact that this is having on me, I'm all in favor of SCDOT taking over negotiation of the acquisition. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other comments from the audience? <clears throat> comments, questions from council? All those in favor of the resolution? Well, Mr. Mayor, I, I just wondered as I listened to the comments from the audience um, whether we've considered everything that's been said um, with the, um, the right of way, uh, fixing the drainage. Uh, is, is it too simple to be done? And the cost, I don't know what the cost is going to cost in terms of. Uh, uh, the, the right of way acquisition, the fees, and so forth, and the professional services. I'm going to say, George, is Rick Tool still here? Would you, we'll have no search. We'll send you a report. Okay. Um, the, the question is, Ms. Price? Whether we've considered, based on what Phil Crow has <clears> said, <throat> based on what the tennis lady, uh, Inc. Has, has, has provided to us all those factors, whether all those factors have been considered when you can look at the, when you look at the fees, uh, moving the pole, all the things that go along with that. Is it too simple for us uh, to consider these recommendations uh, that's been offered to us? Have we already considered this? Uh, we have, in the time that I have been here, uh, reviewed whether or not we could um, <coughs> shift the uh, whole intersection um, to the left or a five degree uh, angle. Mm -hmm. That was uh, evaluated as being impractical because of the, um, it, it decreases the safety of a, of a proper, you know, teed intersection was one of the issues. It also was a more expensive um, alternative. The um, consideration of the uh, parking, that is in the front of uh, the bowling alley. Two thirds approximately of those parking uh, spaces is actually in the state uh, right of way. So the state, um, you know, reclaims their right of way and we, and, and the project will um, have a curb and gutter to keep um, vehicles, you know, on the road and they, they can't really wander. So that'll be a safety aspect of it. So uh, the fact that the current parking is actually on the right of way <coughs> creates the problem for um, the bowling alley business, Thanks. but uh, it is uh, actually the state's right of right of way. Um, and it, once they take their portion, there's no nothing left for parking. Enough said. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from no. council? We've already had. I mean, he's already, we've already had input. <clears throat> All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Right, moving down to petitions and requests. Number one, this is a request to council. The council meeting scheduled for September 26, 2016. Is there a motion? I so move. Second, sir. Second. Comments from? Staff. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we're asking the council to consider either canceling the second meeting in September or moving it uh, with the option of canceling it and then having a special uh, meeting uh, if need be. Uh, I uh, have not attended the, the, uh, the annual uh, 
conference for city managers. This will be my second year of not attending. Uh, there is a requirement that if I am to continue my credential status as a credential city manager, that I attend at least every several, uh, several years. Uh, we weren't uh, aware of the, se the setting of the date. It came late this year of the conference, and so we're simply asking you to either move the meeting and or cancel it or, or have a special meeting uh, if need be. Our scheduled meeting for September is the 12th. Is that right? Our first meeting? Yes. Yes. I, I, would, I would say I'm, I'm fine with passing that, but that, that September 12th, that there's something that needs a second reading to follow, we should certainly uh, set, it, set another meeting for a special meeting to follow September up. September 12th is okay. He's asking September 26th. Right. 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 I'm just saying that that meeting, if there's something that oh, has yeah. an urgency that we need a second reading sure. on, we yeah, certainly absolutely. need to yeah. be sensitive to that. Thank you. Comments from audience? Comments from council? All those in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, moving under information, I'm going to recognize um, Councilman Duar. We give a report on the Municipal Association. Uh, one of the uh, presentations at the Municipal Association uh, had to do with parliamentary procedures, and one of the slides which I'd like to uh, discuss briefly, uh, was titled The Word About Minutes. Uh, and there's five items. The minutes have to reflect date, time, place, and members present. They have to discuss all motions and their disposition. They have to discuss how to record the votes of individual members. And the member, including the chair, should vote or abstain. And the primary reason for reading this Minutes are a record of what was done by the council, not what was said by individuals. <clears throat> and if that be the case, at this point we have an audio uh, recording of our minutes, and I think we ought to get to the point where we literally record what we do, not who said what, when, or what have you. Um, that would certainly simplify the city clerk's uh, work. It would comply with law. And if you had any question about what went on, you just look at the audio. We need to move on and, and, uh, uh, with our minutes. And this would apply to boards and commissions as well. All right. I don't know whether that needs to be a recommendation. I, I, well, I think it could be handled administratively. I think I just so. Think as long as I, I think it could be. <clears throat> My only comment is, whatever we're required by law needs to be word for word and not edited. Whatever is required for law. And not edited. So in other words, just keeping it the way we're doing it? Or just you want to do the, that? What the part he's saying, what we wouldn't do is, is write down the comments of, the, of anybody commenting in the audience. Okay. But whatever we say and do would need to be word for word, which is... No, well, that's pretty not, well are today. That's not what this says. Yes, but we can't have somebody editing what we say. No. The summary, no. I think it's more of a summary of what we say. No, and then the word for wait, wait. Minutes are a record of what was done by council, not what was said by individuals. So if you want to know what we said, go to the audio. I agree. And then you've got it straight out. But all we need is the motion was made and it was approved. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. We don't need to say who said what in support of that. Uh, Just cuts the minutes down significantly. Can we give, we'll give our city manager uh, yeah. directive to see that we're in compliance sure. with that? Then yeah, I would. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, before before we adjourn, I would I would like to just um, congratulate. I know Jessica Campbell's in the back of the room, our Parks and Rec. Um, probably a week, maybe a week and a half ago now, we had the Dixie and Junior Dixie State Championship that we hosted in Aiken. There was a lot of really good baseball. I made about four or five of the games. We had two Aiken teams participating. And uh, I, I'm gonna, I just want to tell you, from, from being there and observing it, your staff was tremendous. They all had, had staff shirts on that were recognized, and people would ask them questions. They, they were ambassadors for our city and did a great job. And I, I, I would just hope at your, at your next uh, staff meeting you would, you would just please let them know that I appreciate the great job they did uh, representing us at that. Completely. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please stand up.